Hello and welcome to this video which is a bit of a follow-up to the last video about Port Merion. This is actually all about an island that you can actually see from the village. Now this shot here is actually from the island looking over to the coast and Port Merion is on the far left hand side if you can just see the white buildings over there that's the hotel that's right by the shoreline. And this island has always been a fascinating place to me since I first visited in the late 90s and I attempted to walk out here when the tide was out and foolishly fell over in quicksand and nearly landed headfirst in a jellyfish. So I squelched back to Port Merion and decided not to do it again. But last year we finally found the correct way to get there which actually involved travelling around the coast round to the other side of the island and following a sort of vague footpath. The starting point is here at Talsano railway station and you can park here, there is a very small car park but you can drive here, park up and then you need to cross over the railway line. There is a level crossing and a footpath that takes you straight across here and it isn't exactly the busiest railway in the world. You might see one train every couple of hours generally so but you should be pretty free to cross without the fear of getting squashed by a train. Once you actually cross, you start to walk down like a farm track, which is very long and very straight. And it all seems pretty easy at first, but it gets harder. Eventually, you come to this, which is actually a sort of peat bog, which is reclaimed land that was originally part of the estuary and was actually underwater most of the time. Now the thing about this is the ground is quite soft and there are a large number of channels, such as this one. And so what you have to do is navigate your way around the channels. And at this point, the footpath is very vague and the signposts for it are non-existent. It's a case of work it out for yourself. What you have to do is just hop, skip and jump over these things, these little channels. Some are big, some are very small and you can literally step over them. Others, you have to walk around them. And others, if you're feeling brave enough, you can take a little bit of a running jump and hop across. Just depends on your mobility and how, uh, how brave you're feeling really. As you start to wander down, and you get across these channels it does get easier and you then start to find that you can actually get to the sand and at the moment you'll see what I mean it actually brings you straight out onto the estuary of course you have to watch out for the tide tables and make sure that you time this correctly otherwise you could find yourself trapped on the island for hours or possibly overnight if you if you're really unlucky here you can see we're actually getting onto the actual sand itself and once you get to the, the sandy bit it's not that far to get there it, it's five minutes and you're over the other side and you're actually on the island and if as you look around you'll be able to see the very edge of the Snowdon mountain range which on this day was covered by cloud a little bit as we start to actually walk over to the island and get onto the shoreline there is one particular thing that I wanted to look at here which is the one building which is a cottage that actually has been here for quite a long time and officially was only occupied until the 1960s however unofficially I think other people have probably squatted or lived there and we'll get to that in a moment when we actually get up onto the main part of the island. But one thing that fascinated me on this trip that wasn't here last year, which we'll also see in a second as we walk a little closer, is the fact that there seems to have been some kind of a power line installed and it definitely wasn't there last year when we walked the same route. 
and I'll show you a quick shot of that in a second once we get off the sand here so here we are right by the actual shoreline of the island itself and that black thing you can see coming into shot now is the power line that seems to have been sort of buried in the sand and runs very close to where this one cottage that is on the island is actually located so I wonder if something is going to happen soon and maybe some work is going to be done here and as you step onto the island here where the power line is you can see bits of paraphernalia farming paraphernalia perhaps um, and also you might actually spot in this shot as we spin round um, what appears to be some bones from possibly a sheep or something that might have been unlucky and didn't make it <laughs> amazingly about five years ago the cottage that we'll see in a moment was actually advertised for rent for the princely sum of 500 pounds per month it did come with a catch in that for your rent you also had to pay to refurbish the cottage and make it livable again because it certainly isn't at the moment and you'll see what I mean when we start looking at it very soon but uh, funnily enough I don't think there were any takers for it in the end so maybe this power line is whoever the owner actually is now it's, it's their attempt to start to get some work done and maybe they're going to make this building into something that's usable again So to get to this building, you have to find this little channel here. Duck under this tree that's fallen, which wasn't there last year, and sort of get underneath that. And once you walk up, you'll actually end up, first of all, seeing on your right a sort of outbuilding, which at one time must have been a stable because um, you, you might be able to make out on the left there that's actually sort of a feeding station for a horse and um, you've got sort of a little trough there to pour in feed and it's just full of all sorts of junk there's a, a real tatty old fridge freezer in there there's an old stereo system lying around on the floor all sorts of random stuff and as you can see daylight's getting in through the roof there is a bit of a, a problem with the, the roof being uh, less than watertight shall we say and that's the outside of it and this is directly opposite what I think is the side door to the cottage itself of course this is wide open and anybody can just walk straight in now the first thing you see on the right hand side to that first doorway is a small sort of shower room which is yeah very dark very dank and uh, I certainly wouldn't want to use it now So we'll head straight upstairs first of all and we're looking at one of the bedrooms. There's two bedrooms up there and this is the smaller one of the two. And this is probably one of the most intact rooms there and amazingly the floor is very intact. You could imagine that if this was actually done up and had everything working properly it'd be a quite a nice little place to be I think. Yeah, there's the loft there which I didn't think was worth climbing up into there's nothing really to see up there and this is the main bedroom again you can see the vandals have been at it over the years and have been chipping away at the plasterboard walls and this is the top of the staircase here again with more holes and so on amazingly the staircase is intact <laughs> Thank you. 
And once you come down those stairs, you're into the back room of the house, which would have been a nice little snug room with a little fireplace, although the fireplace has been ripped out and taken a long time ago, as you can see there. But if you can use your imagination, it probably would have been your typical cosy little Welsh cottage and would have been a very nice place to actually be. I think the windows need a bit of work there. There's not much by the way of, uh, well, glass. <laughs> And here we're looking into the other room, which probably would have been the main sort of lounge. And again, would have been a nice big fireplace there. quite sad really that it ended up in this state. And that's the view out into the garden and there does seem to be amazingly quite a lot of bamboo. So I take it that a previous resident took it upon themselves to actually plant that there. Now this is the rather dark kitchen and this is what's left of quite a big range cooker. And that's actually the kitchen window you can see there, although you can't see much out of it these days. Nature is gradually coming into the kitchen by the look of it. And that's another quick shot of that little bathroom come shower room as you first walk in through that side door. Not the most inviting looking place really, is it? And there you go. Apart from that, getting around the rest of the island is pretty difficult. Uh, it's all pretty well uh, sort of overgrown and there's lots of trees and bushes in the way so you can't really walk over it very easily but you can walk around it and it's a nice place just to go and have a little wander and it seems that you get quite a few tourists now wander across here um, locals walking their dogs when the tide's out but it's never crowded So thank you for watching this brief wander around this mystery island. And if you could please do all the usual things such as like, comment and subscribe. And thank you for watching.